Hi, welcome back to the sixth episode of the series, Safe Cracking for Everyone. So, in this episode, we're going to cover a bunch of tips that's really going to help out with graphing, reading contact points, everything about safe cracking that you might have had issues with in the previous episodes. And one of the most important things when you are trying to craft a combination of a safe lock is reading the contact point and reading the dial in order to accurately determine the contact point. Now the marks on the dial are not always precise. So what I like to do sometimes is I'll tape the corner of a piece of paper onto the top of the dial in order to be able to have a finer point with which to read from. So here I have the corner of a piece of paper that I have cut and then I can just stick that on top of the dial and then tape it down just like so. So you have a much finer point with which to read that contact point. Now you can use anything for this, a piece of paper like this or a toothpick or a piece of wire, just anything fine and sharp at the end. And then you can also do it on the dial as well, but that's up to you. I, I personally just like it at the top. And another issue is when you read the contact point, sometimes you might not be able to get the contact point so accurately. And there's an exercise to help with that. If you have issues reading a contact point consistently, first thing I would say is just to read the same contact point multiple times and then try and graph that down and to ensure you are consistent in getting that same result the same time. So if you have all wheels left on 50, for instance, so if I turn left, 50, come back to the contact point. Now I want to read that not just once, I want to go twice, three times, as many times as is needed to ensure that I am consistent in my reading and that I get only one single reading. So. That's a really good method in order to ensure you have a consistent reading of the contact point. Another way to determine if you are accurately reading the contact point precisely enough is to take a piece of paper and then stick it under the fence. So here, I have uh, the contact area away from the nose so that the fence is lifted off the wheel pack. And then I'm just going to take a piece of paper and I'm going to stick it one sec, under the fence. And then I'm going to turn to the contact area so that fence falls down on that piece of paper, effectively lifting that fence up by the width of a sheet of paper. Now, when I feel the contact point, it should be higher here, it should be the right contact point at least, it should be higher than if I were to remove this paper and then I feel it again, I should now feel a decrease by about one eighth or one quarter of an increment. Generally, for me, I find that the paper I use causes a one eighth drop when I take it out. And so that is very important to be able to determine whether or not you are able to precisely measure the contact point. And so if you're having issues with reading the contact point or if you are unsure as to whether you're doing it correctly, I highly recommend this exercise and keep practicing it until you are sure that you are able to be accurate. Also, another thing is really just make sure you are reading that contact point from the same angle each time. Uh, you might have noticed whenever I read the contact point, you know, I'm showing the lock to the camera, but I always turn it back to the same angle towards me each time to ensure I have very consistent results. Because rotating it either way can cause the apparent contact point to shift in either direction and you would not be consistent. Also, when you are feeling the contact point, what you want to do is apply the lightest amount of force possible. Now one method for doing that is just running a finger or your thumb over the top of the dial until the dial stops moving. And I am using just the absolute minimum amount of force needed to move that dial and then letting my finger slide once that dial encounters any sort of resistance from the contact point. Now, you also want to make sure you're doing that from the same, same place. So here I'm running my finger across the top, and each time I'm running it from the top, I'm not 
just I'm not doing it on the bottom or the side because dials sometimes have a little bit of wiggle so I can wiggle it side to side or up and down a little bit because it's not in completely solidly otherwise it would be a lot harder to turn so when the dial wiggles that changes slightly where the drive cam is the drive cam will wiggle as well it's a little hard to see but you can see there's some wiggle to the side and up and down as well so when you're applying pressure to the dial from the top it might be different than if you're applying pressure from the bottom so you want to make sure that dial is always seated far back and then you're feeling it with the pressure from the same angle each time. Another thing is if not so much as a tip but more of a quality of life uh, um, advice is in our last video where we covered the high-low test uh, in greater detail there are some cases in which you might need to dial a number with the same rotation consecutively. So you might need to dial left 60 and then left 50 for instance. Well, if you want to skip that, you can dial one of those with the right rotation instead, so right 60, left 50, but you have to take into account rotational conversion. And what that means is this, if I have all the wheels picked up with left rotation and I set it at 50, then if I were to spin to the right now and stop just before I reach 50 and then just slowly keep going until I feel some resistance, until that third wheel comes into contact with the drive cam. Now it's going to be a little bit off. Here it's actually half an increment off because remember dialing with left rotation to a number and dialing with right rotation to a number sets them at different places slightly. So here for that third wheel it's half a number off and we want to write that down or keep that in mind and then you keep spinning to the right and then do the same thing for the second wheel you feel you might need to use two fingers now you probably are not going to be able to use just one finger for this but you still want to use a minimal amount of force until you feel that second wheel pick up and for me this is one increment off. Well, I would say one and a quarter increment. You also want to be very precise in this. So the third wheel is half an increment off. The second wheel is one and a quarter increment off. And then do it again for the third wheel. Now that third wheel is two increments off. So essentially, if you have a number you want to dial with left rotation and or right rotation and it's supposed to be with the other, all you need to do now is go past that number by that amount. So, for instance, the combination to this, it was, it was set at 20, 40, 60. So that's left 20, and the left, 60 is also with left rotation. Now if I wanted to set those with right rotation, so 20, I would go to 20 first. Remember that first wheel, which corresponds to the first number in the combination, it was offset at two increments and I want to go past it by two. Let me show you first here with right rotation to 20. It's hard to see but that fence is not resting over a gate. You can see that gate is slightly offset. Now if I go past 20 by two increments to 18. Now you can see that gate for that first wheel. It is now sitting solidly under that fence. So that is how you would apply rotational conversion to these numbers. And then I would go uh, left now, picking up wheels 3, picking up wheels 2, and then going to 40. And then wheels 2 was off by 1 and a quarter increment. So now I want to go past 40 by 1 and a quarter increment. And you can see wheel 2 is now perfectly lined up with wheel 1 even though it's supposed to be dialed with right rotation and I dialed it with left rotation. I just went past the number by one and a quarter increments and every lock is going to be the same. You might need to go past your number by two increments or ev even only 0.5 increments. You just have to see. You just have to spin in one direction, park all the wheels at a number and feel where they pick up with the opposite rotation. And then now I can keep going right 
pick up wheel three and then go to 60. And then I only need to go past by half an increment. And so going past by half an increment, you can see all those gates are lined up perfectly, even though they were all dialed with the opposite rotation that they were supposed to be set with. And then to open, I would just spin left now until I reach the contact area and then turn right again to open. So that is how you solve the rotational difference when dialing numbers. If you do not want to put in the extra spinning required, that is required when you need to put two numbers with the same rotation consecutively. Now, it is highly recommended for you to try this as well. Uh, this is something that you really learn so much better by doing and you will get the feel for it when you are actually manipulating for when you actually are manipulating a lock you don't need to think it through so much you will have that muscle memory down and you will have that uh, understanding of it down as well so hopefully this helped if you guys still have any questions or any difficulties and any of the steps presented so far in this series, feel free to ask. I am always available and happy to help.